First up, she is president and CEO of the polling company and campaign manager for you know who, Mr. Donald Trump. We thank her for being here. Kellyanne Conway is joining us by satellite. Hey. Hey, Phil. Kellyanne, first of all, I have to thank you. You have been doing our show for over 20 years. You were one of our wow. original blonde conservatives, along with Ann Coulter, who's still a friend of mine, to the consternation of many. Uh, but you did not give up on us now that you have become Donald Trump's campaign manager. You stuck it out, and I thank you for being here. I'm happy to go into it. And I must have, I say, I have mixed emotions. First of all, you are enabling pure evil, but... <laughs> Come on, Bill. <laughs> on the other hand, I, I'm, I'm like so proud of you. I mean, you started here, you were just a child star on our show. And, <laughs> and now you're perhaps the most important person in the world because you seem to be the only person who's been able to tame Donald Trump. Many have tried, but only you were able to pull that sword out of the stone. How did you do it? Well, I don't see it that way. I think, he, I, look, I walk in the Trump Tower every day to the campaign and I'm quickly reminded that Donald Trump did very well for himself long before I arrived. I just feel like every leader needs the right environment, the right players around them for them to be them. And he's out there showcasing his generosity, his, I think, his great sense of humor, his love of the country and of people. <laughs> and, you know, Bill, hold on. You're so uh, good at what you do. It, as, as are that's you. That's it. You're so, so good. I'm, Look, I'm so I'm so verklempt that you. I, <laughs> but plainly, you Catholic know. And this Catholic girl from Jersey knows what that means. But no. look, I just want to tell you one thing that you and I have been talking for over two decades now, which is right. a real pleasure and a privilege. Thank you for calling me your friend and for giving me a platform with all those swing voters in your audience tonight. There are. Uh, I want to. There, <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, there are. There are. there are. Okay, good. That's, well, we're persuading no, them. We have a it, much bigger audience than all the other stupid shows that the other politicians do. And speaking and, of politicians, Bill, that's what I wanted to say to you. Yes, and I know, I know Donald Trump, because of you, is trying to reach those suburban people. That's our audience. And some of them are on the Ooh. fence. And that's why I heard today Donald Trump encouraged you to do this show. He did. I wanted to tell you that. He said to say hello. When he heard I was invited, he said, you have to go on that show. <laughs> that is true. He did. Okay. Well, and many politicians are afraid again. to go on your show, but he's not a politician. <laughs> I actually didn't hear that. You know, he sued me once. He did? How'd that go? Well, as soon as a judge saw it, of course, he laughed and threw it out of court. Hey, Bill. I'll tell you um, who's not laughing, though. I gotta tell you who's not laughing. I've been to these rallies, I've been to these fairs. This guy has really created the movement and people feel like they're part of it. And I wanna tell you, you and I have been talking for two decades about the problem with politicians. This guy's an outsider, a disruptor, a change maker, and he's not running for the reason many people run in politics, which is, it's my turn, I'm next in line, I want money, fame, status, power. He already had all of that. And he and his family are making tremendous sacrifices just to do this. And when I travel around with him, people don't stop him, Bill, and say, I liked you on The Apprentice, or I want your autograph. They say, we need jobs in this, in this state, or please save our country. I know you don't like that, but that's what the people say, and we have to respect people. Well, I'm sure I, they're watching tonight. Well, I don't have to respect all the people. <laughs> I, I don't. Well, you do. And I don't. No, I, I don't have to respect all the people. I mean, Hillary was right when she's called a lot of his supporters deplorable because a lot of what they believe is deplorable. But well, we won't even get into that. But, but I mean, I mean... Wrong. But I'm glad we saw her true feelings for once. She doesn't really give them... And by the way, she said deplorable just t about 12 hours after her campaign said she's going to become more uplifting and aspirational so the voters can see what's in her heart amidst all the cacophony and noise and what has she done ever since? She's been negative, negative, negative. The Democratic Party I grew up in was always very uplifting and aspirational. They elevated and elected people like JFK but, and Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Okay. Her message is anti-Trump. She doesn't have a positive message. <laughs> if you were running against Donald Trump, your message would be anti-Trump, too. <laughs> um, nah. And by the way, you say... At 
at, at least she sticks to the facts in her anti-message. Donald Trump yes. has said Hillary uh, will repeal the Second Amendment. Is that a, your, your understanding of what she has said in the past? He said he she yes. wants to release all uh, violent criminals from jail. She wants to release all of them. Is that what you've heard her say? She wants to repeal the Second Amendment and release violent criminals? She has actually said that she doesn't like the Heller decision, which was a Supreme Court decision that held that individuals have a private right to bear arms under the Second Amendment. She's pretty hostile to that. She actually has been very critical of President Obama because she thinks he hasn't gone far enough on uh, open borders and he's been he's deported many people in this country. So, look, Bill, you in one hour show, <laughs> you cover more issues and more substance than she covers in a month. She doesn't talk about issues. Okay. When's the last time she gave All a speech right. on taxes, on the middle right. class, on education, on health care? She just doesn't do it. All right. I, I don't have time to go through all of his lies. We only have an hour. Uh, <laughs> but let's... I can bat them all down. Go. Let's do it. Come on. Come on, Bill. <laughs> but let's just uh, divide it for the moment between the scary and the false. Now, let's, let's start with the scary. Uh, she, Hillary said at the end of her convention speech, uh, you, you can't trust a guy who can be baited with a tweet with nuclear weapons. Okay, just in the last couple of weeks, what he has said is Iranian sailors have made obscene gestures at our boats so we should blow them out of the water. And that when the Chinese didn't provide the proper red carpet when Obama landed there, he would turn the plane around. Isn't she right? Is he really a man who has the temperament, honestly, Kellyanne, 20 years of friendship. <laughs> is she really the person, is he the person to be in the Oval Office? Yes, and by the way, speaking of baited, <laughs> he is occupying serious real estate in her head. I mean, who's been losing in the polls? Who seems very rattled and not very nimble off of her script these days? As you said in your monologue, what the heck happened? You said it a little bit differently, but I'll clean it up. What the heck happened? I mean, she had, she had this in the bag. Every story was, look at the polls, the race is over. Look at the polls, the race is over. So let's do look at the polls now four or five weeks later. We're winning in some of these swing states that Mitt Romney lost where she was way ahead because she thought she would just, it would just be a complete blowout, that she just had to bide her time, sit on her lead, wait out the clock. She tried to do that against Bernie Sanders. He won 22 states. She tried to do against Barack Obama in 2008, and he whooped her, and he won. Christ. And so I, think, I actually think we're going to win, Bill. You know it. You feel it. I think you're getting nervous. Oh, I am getting nervous. But it's not because Trump is good. It's because people are stupid. That's why I'm getting nervous. That's something uh, Hillary you know would say. That's something, I'll, that's I'll, I'll tell you why I'm getting nervous, and I'll do it with a Donald Trump quote from The Art of the Deal. He said, I play to people's fantasies. People want to believe that something is the biggest and the greatest and the most spectacular. I call it truthful hyperbole. I call it lying. Uh, here are some lies. I never, I don't know anything about David Duke. Utter lie. Uh, Vladimir Putin and I are best friends. He never met him. He got a letter from the NFL, which was proved never happened. He gave money to the veterans when he didn't. I was against the Iraq war when he plainly, it's on tape, said he was not. Uh, how do you answer to the fact that this man just says whatever he wants at the moment, in the moment, to get whatever point he wants across, regardless of the facts? That's not true. You're cherry picking certain things he said. And on the Iraq I'm war, quoting. the timeline is very clear. Well, hold on. He was on Howard Stern's radio show as a private citizen, and Stern asked him, So, hey, should we invade Iraq? What do you think? And he said, Well, I guess so. Hillary Clinton proudly went down into the well of the United States Senate and <laughs> cast her vote in favor of the Iraq war. And by the way, she's been a hawk for many years. The Wall Street Journal wrote about it right. just this week that she's always been an interventionist. So the Democrats may not like that. I know you're stuck with a lemon here with 53 days to go and we're surging and I'm sorry for that because she has never been somebody who recaptures the momentum. We saw her fall apart in 2008. We saw Bernie Sanders win 22 states and millions of voters just a couple of months ago, Bill. We see Gary Johnson and in fact Jill Stein taking votes away from her. She's just been, she's floundering at 42, 44%. The question is why and the answer is very simple. A majority of Americans 
think that she doesn't tell the truth, she's not honest or trustworthy, and a majority don't quite like her. Where if she does win, she will make history, but not because of her gender only. But okay, but you're not her. Never can't... elected a president that a majority of Americans felt was dishonest and untrustworthy. Okay, but you're you're her camp. I mean, you're not her campaign manager. You're Donald no. Trump's campaign. I'm all for a female president, but not that one. I, I don't think understand. It's a hypothetical. I understand. It's Hillary. But also, I mean, you know, in the past, you've worked for people like Newt Gingrich, uh, Fred Thompson, Jack Kemp. I don't agree with a lot of what they say, but they're all serious. Mike Pence. Mike Pence. I was trying to keep that out of it. <laughs> Vice President. Uh, but, you know, these are all serious people. You don't see a difference between them and Donald Trump. I mean, you have many children. I mean, are, are you okay with what your children are going to be asking you about supporting a man, enabling a man who did things like make fun of the handicapped and uh, said John McCain wasn't a war hero? Uh, John McCain is endorsed him, and he's endorsed him. What's that? They've endorsed John McCain and Donald Trump have endorsed each other in the race. They support each other in the races this year. So, but but in it, but look, I have no problem saying to my children that I want the future to be better for them, and I already know what Hillary Clinton's going to do. She says it. Uh, well, I, I, you have to look at her website to know it. For God's sake, she doesn't even talk about the issues. And that I don't like. I don't. I can't support somebody who lies for a living. I'm not going to be uh, I'm not lies gonna for a living. Orders. Yes, he does. You it just said you can't true. support somebody who lies for a living when I read That's a right. list of provable lies. Building, why is she way ahead? Let's be honest. I'm, I'm why sorry. is she I'm, way I'm, ahead? I'm Where's the Democratic blue wall? Where's the electoral map? Wait, let's wait a second. She's the one who has 66% of Americans saying she's not honest and she's not trustworthy. She has earned but, that. But that that's what people believe. That's not what up. is an actual no. lie they or not. They know she deleted the emails. They know she doesn't tell the truth about her health condition. They know that she doesn't tell the truth. Where are the 33,000 okay. deleted emails? Right. Where are All the 17,000 right. right. health let you go. the inspector general? My, 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 last but, qu my last question, yes. if Trump, if you guys win... Look me in the eye through that camera <laughs> and tell me I you will not you. actually be more nervous than if Hillary won. I will not be more nervous if Hillary won. I think, no, I'm with, a, I'm with tens of millions of people in this country, Bill, who have joined the Trump movement and have said, you are our last hope because she will tax and regulate. She called ICE as our, <laughs> quote, determined enemies in her convention speech. Our determined enemies, like we're playing a soccer game against them. They're savage murderers who have killed 33,000 people, them and their predecessors, just in the last 13 years, 80% in the last three years. But I will tell you this. Your viewers probably don't know that you and I share a birthday, January yes. 20th, Inauguration yes. Day. Inauguration Come Day. Come as my guest, Bill Maher. We'll see you there. Please keep me out of Guantanamo Bay. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Thank you, Kellyanne Conway. Thank you. I got to give you. it to you. You did it. All right. Let's meet our panel.